Hi guys, sorry I haven't done a video for a while, but uh, I got a case here that I thought might be a good one to, to go through and talk about. <clears throat> it's going to be for an acrylic, all acrylic, mostly acrylic treatment partial for this patient that lost their permanent cast metal partial. And I'm going to have some other work done, but in the meantime, we're going to we're going to make an acrylic partial for this. So similar to what this one is, except it's going to be a little more extensive and bilateral. So we're going to have denture teeth on both sides and acrylic major connector going through there. So uh, the issue with these is that we've got undercuts in the proximal and the lingual, where the acrylic is going to be that when we pack the acrylic in, the acrylic is going to go in those undercuts and it's going to make it so the partial doesn't want to seat in the patient's mouth. So we need to deal with those undercuts, same as with a cast metal partial. This particular one does not have a lot of big deep undercuts, so I think we can get by without duplicating the cast. This is something like this one that has proximal undercuts, larger ones, where the acrylic is going to go in those areas during processing. And then we can shawl blast or chisel the cast away from the partial, but we've still got acrylic in those areas so that when you guys go to put those in the mouth, it's not going to seep because we've got acrylic in those areas that's in the way. Now maybe the lab will take and grind some of that out for you, but they're doing it arbitrarily. Well, they're just guessing at where to where to grind on those areas. Or maybe they won't grind on it at all. And they just rely on you to have to adjust that at the insertion until you can finally get it to seat. The trouble with that is you don't know where to grind. It's not like doing it here where we can use a surveyor and block it out, block it out and eliminate those, those undercuts, whether they're proximal or lingual. And so you grind and grind and grind and grind until you finally get the, get the partial to seat. And then you've overground it everywhere so that now it fits like socks on a rooster. And that's why uh, people don't like doing treatment partials. Or they want to use flexible material, which all that does is uh, provide enough flexibility to get it over those undercuts. So in this particular case, because there are not a lot, we've got some areas, I'm gonna just gonna use a little plaster. I'm gonna soak the model in water and then I'm gonna add a little plaster in those undercut areas, those little interproximal undercuts in the anteriors and block those out. And then I'm gonna wax up, set my teeth and my wires and wax up directly on this cast. Otherwise, I would block them out in wax with the surveyor, and then I would duplicate the cast with alginate, probably, and then uh, I would have to remount that duplicated cast so that my wax would be stone in these areas, and nothing is going to boil away in the boil out, so when I process the acrylic, it wouldn't go in those areas. But this one I'm going to block out with uh, plaster and then I can bend the wires and set my teeth on it. Okay, so I blocked out the undercuts with plaster. Everything below the survey line is blocked out so no acrylic can go in those areas. And it's going to make it so the pressure goes on and off without a lot of adjusting or grinding or arbitrarily grinding those areas on it. Right. And a little bit around the gingival margins of the anteriors where there was root recession. Or I don't want the acrylic digging into those areas. So it will relieve those areas of acrylic. And I surveyed it and bent the clasps. Okay, so the laser buckles in the undercut, proper amount, comes around the distal. At the survey line, okay. I bent the strengthener bar. Okay, it's 13 gauge half round wire, stainless steel wire. So that will get embedded in the acrylic. Okay. The wire clasps are 18 gauge round wire, so they're flexible in all directions. 
whereas the strengthener bar is not. It needs to be rigid so that the patient, when they, if they squeeze this partial together back here, it's going to want to break or snap in two up in this area because it's weak there. So this will, will help make that more rigid so that they don't break it. Because we frequently see if we don't have a strengthener bar on these lowers that the acrylic is going to break up in this anterior area. Right. And these little tabs that are sticking out here, right. those are there to help hold the patient's tongue down because the spouse complained that this, this guy was uh, talking too much. So we put these on here and it's going to hold his tongue down so he can't talk so much. So next I'm going to set my teeth in here, go back on the articulator, okay, and I'm going to uh, set my denture teeth. I'm going to have to notch the tooth out okay, up here so that it fits tight against the next tooth. Just because the wire is there, I don't want a gap in that spot. So I'm going to have to do some grinding on the tooth in order to fit it as close to the next tooth as I can. So we'll do that next. And then once the teeth are set, then we'll add all the remaining wax and do the festooning. So there will be, when we wax it up, there will be wax, you know, uh, resting on the cingulums of these anteriors up at or slightly above the survey line on the lingual because that's the bracing for our clasps. If there's no acrylic on the lingual then that clasp orthodontically pushes that tooth in. So we've got to be sure and keep our acrylic up high and right against the tooth here. I don't want a gap in there or over here. That acrylic needs to be left up high. It's same in the finishing and polishing that's got to be kept up there so that it braces that. Okay. So next we'll work on setting the teeth. Just for the fun of it, I decided I'm going to solder this clasp wire to the strengthener bar on each side. It's not entirely necessary, but, uh, but we have done it in the past and it uh, will make a good demonstration on soldering on these. So. I'm using an electric soldering machine that's older than the dental school. It's probably been here since the old building, but it, uh, which was prior to 1972, but it still works and we use it now and then. And uh, now, now most of them are done uh, with laser welding. I'm putting a little bit of paste flux on here. Okay, that's what this is. Okay. And then I'm gonna take my little piece of gold Whipla solder and place it on the wire. If I can get it to stay there, like that. Turn the soldering machine on, or the welding machine, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the negative or the ground on that wire, and I'm gonna use the positive and touch it on the solder. And just like that, it's soldered. Next, I'll go and do the other side, and then we'll continue setting the teeth. Okay, I had to change course here and reset some teeth. Um, between the space in the posterior area here and the rise in the ascending ramus, I had to drop a premolar and go to two molars on this side. And, uh, and I've ground the tooth teeth in. This patient happens to be in bilateral crossbite, both sides. So occlusion is really odd. So, uh, so I've notched the molar out to go around the clasp. Uh, and I've ground the occlusion in to recontour the occlusal surface of the denture teeth so it articulates with the upper teeth better. So you, otherwise you have tiny little pinpoint contacts, but I've done a fair amount of occlusal grinding on these in order to do that. Uh, still got, got the teeth over the ridge, which is good. That's where they go. Same on this side. Got decent occlusal contacts here. Here, once again, we're here on crossbite, so now the lower teeth hold the cheek out so that the patient doesn't uh, bite their cheek on either side.
So next I'm going to uh, wax it up for processing. So I'll have full extension over all the soft tissue areas. I'll rest on the singulums of the anteriors and then all the way down to the depth of the peripheries to get it ready for processing. Okay, so we've got this waxed up and festooned ready for processing. Extended it all the way to the extension of the peripheries. Now this is an alginate impression, so we know that these peripheries are overextended. Um, so we will be probably almost certainly reducing the length of these back in the finish and polish. But in the meantime, I'd rather give myself something to finish and polish and not have thin, sharp edges in these areas. So I've waxed it to full extensions. Retromolar pad coverage is critical. <clears throat> All these mandibular partials and complete dentures need to have full coverage of the retromolar pad. So that's fully extended and not thinned out, not too thin in that area. Okay. Lingual peripheries will probably be shortened, but I've waxed those to full length to facilitate the processing. For sure, we've got to have acrylic kept up high opposite the clasps. Okay, so these retentive clasps have to have reciprocation or bracing on the lingual provided by the acrylic so that that clasp doesn't orthodontically push that tooth over. Otherwise, if we remove this acrylic in this area, then the patient's going to come back with a loose partial and it's going to be because that clasp has pushed that tooth lingual. Okay, so full coverage of the retromolar pad here. One thing I don't like is I would like to have had more length here of this molar in particular. I'd like it to be as long as the premolar, okay, gingerly down here. But uh, because this tooth had to be up so high because of the malocclusion in this case, that was all that I could extend down there. So there's not too much I can do about that. Um, but I'm counting on the cheek is going to be covering most of that up. So I don't think it's going to be an issue in this case. So that's it. Now I'll go to remove this from the mounting and then flask it. When I do, my flasking is going to cover the uh, stone teeth, the wire clasps. And I'm also going to have my first pour of stone covering these tabs on the lingual that's going to help hold that bar in place so it doesn't move during processing. When we pack 5,000 pounds on this acrylic to pack that acrylic in that area, I don't want any of that bar flexing. And these are gonna help hold that in place for uh, during the processing. And then after it's done processing, we'll cut these off and uh, reduce them down and cover them with a little bit of self-curing acrylic. Okay, so I got the first pour of the flasking done for this thing now. Basically I put a separator on the cast so it'll come out and I've covered the, everything except for the wax and the denture teeth. A little bit of occlusal surfaces as long as they're not a stone hard undercut. But the, uh, the clasps, the buckle part of the clasps are covered with stone so that's going to hold it in place when the uh, when the wax and the teeth are all boiled out, the, uh, the little tabs coming out here and here are covered, buried in stone, so that's going to hold that bar in place that's embedded in this so that, uh, so that it doesn't move during flasking. Otherwise, if it's just embedded in stone, when I boil out all the wax, then it's just floating. It's nothing in to hold it in the right position. So uh, this way, uh, that takes care of that. So I'll put separator on this stone, do my second pour and third pour in the flask, and boil it out, and I'll show you what that looks like in a few minutes. Okay, so it's all boiled out. The wax is boiled out and eliminated. That's the underside of the teeth. And that's the void we've got where it was, back to exposing all the metal. You can see my uh, strength center bar not touching the tissue there. We'll be able to get acrylic in there and around it and pack it and uh, cure it overnight. And then we'll break it out and finish and polish it.
Okay, got it done. Got it processed. Uh, haven't completely polished it because the doctor, the dentist, wants to finish the peripheries and uh, do the final finishing, polishing himself. So I've gotten uh, gotten it roughed in, taken the flash off, removed uh, all the excess acrylic that we've been around every all of the exterior portions of this where there was flash. I cut the little tabs off that hold the tongue down. Decided they didn't want that on there. It looks cruel and unusual. So we uh, so we cut that off and covered them with a little drop of acrylic to cover to seal that metal in the rest of the way. And uh, removed any excess acrylic around the clasps. We keep uh, resting on the cingulums of the anterior so we got something hard for it to sit on rather than totally be floating on soft tissue, and uh, the rest of it was uh, good to go. So a few final words about these treatment partials. Um, in this case, because I blocked out with plaster and did not duplicate the cast, I have no cast to put it back on to fit it to. Had I blocked out with wax and the surveyor would have been better, but I would have had it duplicated and then remount the duplicate and do all my wire bending and plasting on that. But the advantage is that you still have the master cast then to come back and fit it to and adjust it, save a little bit of time. Chair side, definitely quite a bit more time lab-wise, but uh, you get a little better result. Uh, but this one I didn't feel I needed to because I did not have multiple freestanding teeth and big engravers. As you can see from this, these are a lot of work. I would much rather do a complete upper denture than have to do a treatment partial where you're doing all that. So the idea that because it's uh, just a temporary or something that it's not a lot of work, uh, that's not the case. They take a lot of time and, uh, to make them right or as good as we can. Um, and there's a, a lot of uh, extra steps that we need to go through to make them so that they fit properly. So that's it. Sorry this one was so long. Uh, like comments or if you have any suggestions on other videos you might want that I could do, uh, let me know. I think the next one I need to do is setting teeth on a cast metal partial and uh, preparing and evaluating it before we do start setting teeth. So thanks a lot. Bye now.